wavelength and frequency. Today's lesson is going to be a review of what you've learned in physics on wavelength and frequency, but we want to make sure that everybody is on the same page with what they remember. The wave nature of light. We're going to start by discussing electromagnetic radiation. This is also known as radiant energy or light. Um, we must also refer to it as, as heat. A form of energy having both wave and particle characteristics. It moves through a vacuum at the speed of light, and that's going to be a very important relationship when we get to doing some of our calculations. And that speed of light that's so important to us, we're going to use 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that's a number that you're going to need to know as the constant for the speed of light. You should already be familiar with this from your physics class last year. A wavelength has the symbol lambda. It's the distance between two adjacent peaks of a wave. And this is marked very clearly from here to here. The units that this is measured in is nanometers. If we take a look at the whole electromagnetic spectrum, we have a great little graphic here that sort of talks about what things are measured in um, a certain number of meters. So it says waves in the electromagnetic spectrum vary in size from very long radio waves, which are down here. Radio waves can be the length of a football field. One wave can be that size. Um, the size of buildings to very short gamma rays, rays that are smaller than the size of the nucleus of an atom. If we think about these rays, um, you know, here's microwaves, which are about the size of a bee, you know, between a bee and a pinhead. And then we start getting into infrared. And then we move through the visible spectrum, which is a, just a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, but probably the part that we're most familiar with. And we're going to do some neat labs looking at that um, visible light spectrum. And then it moves down into ultraviolet light. And it's this side with these very small wavelengths that are the ones that are most damaging to us. If we look at ultraviolet waves, those are the ones, the UV rays, that we're trying to protect ourselves from sunburn. And then we get down to X-rays, which we know are things that we want to um, limit our exposure to because they can cause problems. And then we get down as far as gamma rays, which could be very dangerous. The visible spectrum breaks down into um, the colors that we see, and the acronym to remember that is Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv, which stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And if we notice, the red has that longest wavelength, and the violet that UV light has the shortest wavelength. Frequency is characterized by the symbol nu. It's not a V, it's sort of a cursive V, because um, V stands for velocity. It's the number of waves or cycles that pass a given point in a second. So if we look, waves that have a large wavelength have a low frequency, and waves that have a short wavelength have a high frequency. All electromagnetic energy travels at the speed of light, as like we talked about earlier. They're inversely related. So C is our constant that stands for the speed of light, which is equal to wavelength times frequency. That C constant, like I mentioned earlier, is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and that's going to be a number that you're going to need to know. Wavelengths are measured in meters, and 1 meter is equal to 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers. That's going to be a conversion that you're going to need to know specifically for this unit because we're going to need to convert between meters and nanometers in order to do our problems. And frequency is measured in seconds to the minus 1, which is the same as 1 over seconds, or hertz, and those are interchangeable. So let's try a problem. 
It says a certain violet light has a wavelength of 413 nanometers. And that's typically how you're going to see wavelength given to you is in nanometers. What is the frequency of the light? There's our equation that we need to use. And so I just went ahead, I didn't solve for the variable that I was missing, but I just went ahead and plugged in the numbers that I knew. So I have my constant, which I'll always have in these problems, 3 times 8, 10 to the 8 meter per second. But then, if you notice, this nanometers is not congruent with this meters. So I need to do a step here where I convert my nanometers to meters, just like we've been doing in unit conversions, and then I can solve for my frequency. We cannot do this problem if we don't do that because these meters here are incongruent with these nanometers here. So we need to have both of our units in meters. And when I solve this problem, I end up with a frequency of 7.26 times 10 to the 14th hertz, or 1 over seconds. If we look at energy, energy is not giving off continuously, but in little packets or quanta. And we will discuss this more when we look um, at um, the spectra, the visible line spectra of different elements. But this idea that energy is not a continuous idea, it's a continuous thing, but um, little, little packets. Um, the analogy that I use is that um, money is not continuous. We have a smallest packet that's available, and that's a penny. We cannot have a part of a penny. We can't have a quarter of a penny or a half of a penny. Um, it's just not in our monetary system. And energy is sort of the same way. There is a packet. There's a certain number that it can't go you know, lower, and, and we refer to that as quanta. This energy is directly related to the frequency by the equation energy is equal to H, which is Planck's constant. And frequency. And Planck's constant is a constant, and it's 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per hertz. So let's try this type of problem. It says, what is the energy of a quantum of light of frequency 4.31 times 10 to the 14th hertz? Well, we have our equation. Energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, and energy is what we're looking for. So all we're going to do is substitute in Planck's constant, 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34 joule hertz, and multiply it by that frequency, 4.31 times 10 to the 14 hertz. You notice our hertz will cancel out, and energy will be equal to 2.86 times 10 to the 19th joules. If we look to summarize that relationship between energy and electrons, an electromagnetic wave of a certain frequency has only one possible wavelength. And we will see this when we look at those atomic spectrum. And that equation is the speed of light is equal to wavelength times frequency. And this has only one possible amount of energy, where energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency.